My name is John Perel. I am one of the account executives here for Churn Zero. And I'm excited to have the opportunity today to go through our webinar topic, which is using custom dashboards to optimize customer success teams. Um, and really the focus of the presentation is gonna be on providing the right information to the right individuals in the right format. Before we get started though, I just wanna to share a couple of housekeeping keeping items. Um, we do have questions available, so I'll be keeping a close eye on the questions that are asked throughout this presentation. And if there are any questions that I do not get answered, well, actually all the questions will be shared with the audience. And so if there's any questions that we don't get answered, we'll be sure to follow up through email to answer every question too. So feel free to ask any questions um, as we go through the, the, the presentation today. But to cover this topic, you know, I've really broken up this now into three step agenda in terms of what I want to accomplish on the call today. And really the first thing is, is starting to look at when Excel and Salesforce reporting just isn't enough for customer success teams. There's a point where Excel and Salesforce type of reporting or CRM reporting is totally fine, but there's gonna be that point where we're gonna need a dedicated tool. We're gonna to look at dashboards by certain roles in the organization, as well as key metrics to be including for each of those specific roles. But before we get into the content here, I do just wanna start with a quick poll question. And what I'd like to understand is, is you know, how are you currently viewing your customer data? Do you have dashboards for your customer data? And if you do, you know, are you using it through Excel and Google uh, spreadsheets? Are you using your CRM or potentially Salesforce? Or do you have a dedicated tool for, for customer success dashboards? So there should be a poll open now. I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes here to, to get their answers in and then we can look and review the uh, responses together. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll here. And it looks like the overwhelming amount of people, almost half of the, the, the audience here, might be able to share the results. Maybe it's already sharing, I don't know. <laughs> but it looks like half of the audience here is, is using Salesforce and CRM reporting, which is great. It's a really good thing to see. All right, so now with that being said, um, let's start to look at you know, what makes a good dashboard and specifically what makes a good dashboard for customer success teams. I've really broken this up into four key areas. The first key area being the single source of truth. And you know, if you think about it, dashboards, they're designed to drive action or decisions. And if you're reporting on incomplete data sets, you're gonna to start to make the wrong decisions or assumptions. And at the same time, what that really means for your team is that time is money. And if a CSM has to bounce around from system to system to system, they're losing valuable time that they could be spending with their customers to help them achieve their goals. And so really in that same vein, is this real-time information. Just like incomplete data, reporting on stale data is gonna impact your decisions. You know, if a customer calls in out of the blue and the renewals on the line, you need to know if they have support tickets open right now. You need to know when was the last time that they logged into the platform. The third area is, is really ease of use. And this is all about who's owning the, the reports or who's creating the reports. So you're gonna need to have a dedicated admin to build out these reports or can an individual you know, person come in and edit or tweak the, the, the report to see what they wanna see. And the last key area here, and sometimes even more importantly, is, is, is this information gonna be shared across the organization? Now, not only is it designed to drive action and decisions for the customer success team, but we also wanna open this up to make the company more data-driven, right? And if you think about it for a marketing team, to look at their exact same reports, but be able to add customer health scoring in there, it can really open up their eyes. Um, so, I mean, having this data readily, readily available for other departments really starts to help keep customer success top of mind. But with these four key areas defined, let's start to look at these common options. I was actually pretty surprised to see that it looks like you know, not as many people as I was expecting are using, sales or are using spreadsheets, which is really good. And you know, I won't spend too much time here then, but you know, I'm sure everybody at some point has used Excel spreadsheets, even outside of you know, the professional world. Um, and I'm sure as we all know, right, the problem with Excel is it becomes difficult to maintain and it's very manual to update. You know, it's only really you that's updating the information. So it's only as real time as, as much time as you're spending in here. The other one, which it looks like is the majority of the people on the line is, is using Salesforce or their CRM. And I'm sure as, as people know, right, the problem with traditional CRMs like a Salesforce is that it's an incomplete data set, right? It doesn't have adoption metrics of customers. It doesn't have engagement metrics. Sometimes it doesn't even have financial or ticketing metrics. And you know, Salesforce, it's in the name of it. It's very focused on sales teams. The pipeline itself 
is very focused on you know discovery, demo, proposal, those type of stages where yeah, they can translate into how likely is the prospect to buy from you, but they don't really translate into the likelihood the customer is going to be renewing with you. And if you think about it, you know, sales teams, they're very focused on activities. Customer success teams, they're very focused on outcomes. And if you're trying to track sales team activity, such as demos completed, you know, meetings logged or activities logged or overdue tasks, right? It's quick and easy ways to do that. But when it comes to customer success, there's that whole other side of the equation. And that's what is your customer doing, right? Salesforce doesn't have a native way to start to track your customer's performance, your customer's metrics, your customer's adoption or, or outcomes. Um, and then of course, the other big X here is the ease of use. You know, building and maintaining a Salesforce dashboard is no easy feat. A lot of the companies I speak to don't have a Salesforce admin, or sometimes they do, but they're on retainer, which means they have to pay you know, to use them. Um, and even the companies that do have one, you know, what's the process to make a change on your dashboard? Is it gonna require you to open up a ticket? How long is that ticket? Or can you go in and, and just manipulate the data how you wanna manipulate the data? And then the other one, you know, maybe, maybe, hopefully not, but it could be sticky notes, right? And this is a true story at my first job, we, we were using Salesforce. And this was about almost 12 years ago. And we had one rep who refused to use Salesforce. And he had just a lion's mane of sticky notes surrounding his computer screen. And he swore he could find whatever it is that he needed to find you know, very quickly. But obviously we know sticky notes or, or you know, whatever you wanna do, you know, write it down on your, on your desk, um, isn't the best way of doing things. But to help start to answer the question of, well, when is the right time to start to, to invest in a tool to start to you know, have a dedicated platform for customer success dashboarding and metrics. You know, I really look at the maturity scale of customer success. And this looks at companies starting from stage one of being completely reactive all the way to stage five, which is fully efficient teams. And generally speaking, in stage one and stage two, it's for newer customer success teams that are really just still trying to establish a process for you know, sometimes they're small, but growing customer base. And more often than not, you know, the CS teams are traditional support versus, you know, true proactive customer success. It's really when you get to stage three, that is when you start to become more proactive. And it starts, it's, it's where you start to start to define your own KPIs as well as your customer KPIs. And once you've had these KPIs defined, that's when you're going to want to start to report on, well, how well are we doing at reaching these goals? And I think about even myself now with COVID, um, none of my clothes fit me anymore. And my biggest you know, goal right now is, is losing weight. And I really didn't become serious about you know, this goal of, of losing weight until I downloaded an app called MyFitnessPal. And I think it translates well here because you know, for me, my, my big goal here is that number, right? Number of pounds that I'm losing. And I had that one metric. And once I downloaded that app, I was able to start to report on the small things I was doing throughout the day to help me reach that overall goal, right? My exercise, my diet, those little small things that were impacting that overall goal. And just like in customer success, you have that overall metric, revenue retention. And until you start to report on those little things that you're doing throughout the day, you know, we're not going to be able to understand, are we making impact or not? And then when we get to stage four and stage five, this is where we start to become a data-driven company, right? We're sharing this information. We're sharing these KPIs across the team to start to make those data-driven decisions. You know, stage one, you're really just starting to, or trying to stay afloat. Stage five, we have the data to, to drive these decisions. And even recently, you know, I think about Slack, right? I don't think they got purchased by Salesforce for $28 billion, you know, just because they were making gut decisions. You know, they had the data to back it up. So stage three is really that, that time is when we start to define those KPIs. We need to start to understand how well are we doing at achieving those KPIs. But if we get a little bit more specific on the dashboards themselves, you know, when we start to build out these, you know, just to give you a little bit of guidance here, you know, I really started to look at three key, key questions here, which is, you know, first thing first is know the goal of the dashboard. Oftentimes it's just a question that you're looking to get answered. You know, for example, the question might be, well, which of my customers are coming up for a renewal? That could really be the guideline for the dashboard. The second is to know the audience. What that really means is at what level do you want that question answered? The lower the level, Generally, the more tactical the data and the dashboard is going to be, but the higher up it goes, the more strategic and more economical the dashboard is going to be. And so for that same question, you know, which of my customers are coming up for a renewal? An executive might want to know what industries that have an upcoming renewal have the highest churn risk. Whereas CSM, you know, they want to be more tactical. So it's going to be what actions do I need to do 
to get my at-risk uh, upcoming renewals back on track. Then lastly, and something I feel like a lot of people don't sometimes think about is know the purpose of the dashboard. Is it a dashboard that you're gonna be looking at once a week or once a month, or is it gonna be a dashboard that is gonna drive and enable focus throughout the day? And even for me, you know, there's a couple different dashboards that I use. There's one dashboard that I literally look at once a week, and that's during my one-on-one -on -one with my manager. I never look at it other until he brings it up on the calls. Um, then I have another dashboard that 8 a.m., I look at it, and that's what's giving me my focus throughout the day. Now I know what to be doing throughout the day because of that 8 a.m. dashboard that I'm looking at. And so if we look back at that first question of you know, which of my customers are coming up for the renewal, that kind of sample idea, oftentimes a CSM isn't going to want to see a dashboard that's got you know, 10 plus widgets on it because that's where it starts to become information overload or paralysis by analysis. Right? You want to keep it a little bit more action and, and you know, start to drive the focus. So hopefully this helps start to think about ways to, to get started on dashboards. But now I actually want to start, start to take a look at the individual roles and the key metrics to include for each of those individual roles. And the first one that I wanted to start with was actually the executive level, right? And I picked this one first because I still hear executive teams saying, well, customer success just isn't top of mind for us. And oftentimes it's not because they're either just unaware of the metrics or they don't have a quick and easy way to report on these metrics. It's almost out of sight, out of mind. So being able to share these metrics with the, the executive team gives customer success that louder voice and keeps customer success top of mind. And when it comes to dashboards for executives, they're often gonna wanna know the why behind the metrics, broken up by specific segments and verticals. You know, things like which segment of mine has the highest churn rate? Or on the flip side, right, what segment of mine has the highest likelihood to expand or upsell or grow with us? Um, and then of course, you know, what are my customers are, are considered at risk? And I wanna highlight this one because we hear it all the time about these companies that have you know, very detailed and specific health scoring factors in you know, Excel or, or, or what have you. Um, and if you share this information with an executive, if you share, hey, these are my accounts that are at risk, the first question they're gonna ask is, well, why are they at risk? And if you have to break out some crazy Excel you know, formula to explain why these customers are at risk, it's not going to go over well. The next area I want to look at was actually dashboards from the individual CSM perspective. And when I was putting this together, I felt like there's a million different metrics that I could include here, but I really tried to boil it down to some of the more common and more action-oriented metrics. And you know, in my mind, you know, dashboarding from a CSM, it's 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 designed to drive focus and action. You know, what you don't want to have is a dashboard that they end up looking at once a week or once a month, because really what that means is it's not that useful for them. So from a CSM perspective, it's keeping a close eye on those upcoming renewals with the churn risk. It's keeping a close eye on those accounts that have recently dropped in a health score or had a change in the account, not necessarily tied into the health, but things around like a merger or acquisition, things like you know, maybe major layoffs or even you know, leadership turnover, all things that should be top of mind uh, for a CSM when they're managing the book of business. Then of course, there's always gonna be adoption metrics too. You know, how are their customers adopting to their technology you know, if this is available to you? Um, you know, things around license utilization, you know, are they using key sticky features? What percentages of your customers aren't? Um, you know, all of these you know, really important metrics should be remaining top of mind from a, from a CSM perspective. And the other area is, is sharing this information with the rest of the organization, right? I think I've included that one as one of my important factors for, for customer success dashboards because this is great data to be sharing with other departments because it helped enable them to make even data-driven decisions. And it's useful for sales teams. It's useful for marketing, for product, for even support teams too. And we can start to look at things from a sales rep's perspective of, you know, show me my customers in, you know, the XYZ vertical. Show me my customers that can be, you know, considered a reference for us or even from a marketing perspective, Show me my customers that um, you know, are the most healthy in, in which verticals. And then even from a support perspective too, I think about this one a lot because a lot of companies don't provide this information for their support teams, but things like you know, uh, um, renewal dates or health scores for their support reps. Because if a customer of yours is opening up a support ticket within the renewal window, you know, that ticket might have to become a high priority if that customer is considered at risk. I also actually want to focus on this top bullet point as well, because I think this is an interesting one that not a lot of companies think about, but it's distribution of account health per sales rep. And really what this means is, is there one sales rep of mine that is constantly selling red at-risk deals? 
And if there is, we should probably look at that sales rep because you know, potentially they're, they're you know, not setting proper expectations or not being totally honest about what the technology can do, but you know, we should address that because they're always selling deals that end up just being a red at risk customer. And the next area is from that team lead, uh, you know, kind of the manager or even sometimes a VP perspective. And for this one, I actually want to dive in to the product itself a little bit here and just show, you know, kind of some of the dashboards that we could have here. But from a, a team lead perspective, it's really all about managing the workload of your team and your team's performance and activity. You know, from a, from a, a team lead perspective, right, good obviously metrics to be including is, is things like book a business by CSM. Get an understanding of, okay, when we do have a new customer come on board, who should I be assigning it out to, right? Who in my team has the most amount of accounts versus who in my team can start to take on more accounts, it looks like. Um, we could also obviously look at accounts by churn risk, but I think this becomes more interesting when we start to apply specific segments to it, you know, such as maybe you want to filter down this view to just your enterprise accounts. Who in my team is managing the most amount of enterprise accounts or most revenue associated with those customers? Or even when we start to apply the renewal window to it. In this example, we can look at customers that have a renewal coming up in the next 120 days. And so now we can even get a sense of who on my team is going to be the busiest in the next 120 days, simply because they have the most accounts or most revenue uh, up for renewal in this, this next renewal window. But from a takeaway perspective, that was really everything I had to, to share today. You know, from a takeaway perspective, right? It's good to start to understand what is the purpose of the dashboard before we build it out. Know the audience of the dashboard, who is this going to be used for? And then always start small. You know, sometimes when you, you get access to, to dashboard tools, we want to build every single dashboard under the sun. But the reality is, is when you're reporting on everything, you're really reporting on nothing. So always start small, start with what's important, and then grow out from there. So this was everything I had today uh, for our discussion. I hope everybody found this as a, a useful discussion. I'm now going to peek at the questions and start to try to answer as many questions as we can here together. And of course, if, if not, I'll, I'll be able to, to follow up with them afterwards. Um, so it looks like we got a question here. Um, how many widgets can be added to, to one dashboard? You can add as many as you would like to to the dashboard. But you know, one thing just to keep in mind is, is that that's where it could become information overload when you have too many widgets on one dashboard. You know, once again, you're kind of not reporting on, on anything since you got too much, you know, sometimes data overload kind of thing. Um, do you have control over the color scheme? Yes, you do. So you can change the color of the, the dashboards, the bar charts, uh, the pie charts. You can match your brand with the colors. You have full control over the, the color schemes. Um, I'm going to, to take one more here. Um, how long does it take to create one dashboard? Uh, I put that one together actually before this call, you know, it took me less than 10 minutes to create the dashboard. And the nice thing is, is that, you know, if you do need, need to make changes on the dashboard, anybody can make the changes. It doesn't require an admin. You can apply new filters. You can add a new widget to those dashboards, you know, really at any time. All right. Do you see that there's, there's some other questions here? Um, I promise we're going to answer everybody's questions on the call, or I'm sorry, after the call. So you know, feel free to keep typing them in, but we will absolutely follow up and, and you know, answer all the questions and, and make sure to email out the answers as well. Um, I truly appreciate everybody's time here. I hope you, you found this as a useful session. And you know, thank you so much for, for spending the time with us today.